All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the next installment of our 30 minute workout series, where we're gonna review numerous ways to navigate a civil 3D model. Uh, my name is Jerry Bartles. I'm a civil technical specialist and I'm gonna be today's presenter. Assisting me on today's call are my colleagues who are also uh, civil technical specialists with Autodesk, Mr. Alan Gilbert, Angel Espinoza, and currently Jeff is not with us, but he may be joining us briefly. Um, while I'm running through the material, they will be in the background helping address any questions that come up along the way. If uh, you've joined us for a previous 30 minute workout before in the past, I'd like to welcome you back. If you're new to the concept, I'm sure that um, you would agree that traditional training classes can typically only cover the need to know functionality in a software solution. Basically what you need to know to do your job. Uh, there just isn't enough time to cover everything that an application has to offer. So as a result, other tools, features, and workflows must be picked up later, usually after a lifetime of using the software. So we put together these workouts as a way to have an opportunity to demonstrate some of these less, lesser discussed features and provide a resource for folks using Civil 3D, in this case today, uh, to get more value out of their software investment. A couple of ground rules for these sessions. The examples that we'll be showing are somewhat abstract in nature. We do that intentionally by using more abstract examples. We can focus solely on how a tool functions. And once you understand how a tool works, you can apply it in any way that works best for your particular situation. And since these sessions are only 30 minutes long and we wanna be respectful of your time, we're committed to always starting and ending on time. There's no need to worry about taking notes. These sessions are always recorded and everyone that registers will get access to a recording. If you have any questions during the session, please put them in the Q&A pane and we'll try and get them answered along the way. If any questions remain at the end of the session, we'll get back to you with an answer afterwards. Finally, if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one follow up call with us regarding the topics we discussed during these sessions, please let us know. We always enjoy speaking with other users. Quick agenda for today. Um, we're going to be looking at, as I said, various ways to navigate. Some will expand on some of the traditional commands we may have used. We'll look at some ways we can uh, exploit some functionality in the prospector tab, maybe locate some areas by latitude and longitude or address, and then get into some maybe some other tools folks may or may not have been exposed to regarding breaking up a model with viewports, the drive tool, doing some walk and fly, and others. Uh, as we always say, this is a PowerPoint free zone. So Everything that we do, we like to do within the application. So this is the end of my PowerPoint. We will uh, drop out of that and we will go into our, our first Civil 3D model here. So what I have on the screen, I've got a, a model that is a corridor that crosses over a box culvert. I've got various things in here from surfaces to sample lines. I've got some uh, storm network, uh, like a, a culvert that's in here now. I've got some assemblies, profile sections, number of things that are in here. And as I'm just kind of moving around showing you what's here, I'm using some of the functionality that we've been talking about, zoom, pan, orbit. Uh, those things have been available to us for since the beginning of time, but they've kind of changed or evolved in the way that we've been able to use them. And now the bulk of what folks rely on is what's available on the mouse wheel. All right, I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If I click and hold on the mouse wheel, I'm panning. If I double click on the mouse wheel and depending on how, uh, how much abuse your mouse wheel has taken, uh, sometimes double clicking, it, it should give you a zoom extents. In my case, sometimes I have to double click on it a few times. Um, to extend that further, first off, as I'm zooming in and out, the increment at which it goes in and out can be adjusted. Uh, that's uh, adjusted through a tool that's called zoom factor. So I'll start to type that in, use the autocomplete. By default, that's 60. I'm gonna set that to 10. And then as I adjust my wheel, you see that it adjusts the throws on the zoom in and out. So depending on the type of project that you're working with and as you're moving around, uh, having the throw set something other than the default may, uh, may assist as you're doing that. The great part about working in Civil 3D or even just in AutoCAD tools, a lot of the values that we may have if the defaults out of the box don't uh, necessarily aren't the best for our particular needs, many of those can be adjusted. Uh, zoom factor is uh, one example of that. Other things we can do to navigate from within our model off the mouse wheel. One thing that a lot of folks don't necessarily use 
all that often, but if I'd like to orbit, if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then hold down the mouse wheel, as I start to move, it will orbit around my model. All right, you see what looks like a, uh, a green P in the middle of my screen. That's the orbit point that it's chosen by default. It's kind of picked that based off of the geometry that I had available on the screen. Not as useful for me moving around. I'd maybe like to get a perspective of my, my box culvert looking down the culvert under the corridor model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the shift key in my mouse wheel. I can select the object or objects that I'm interested in. And then if I use the, uh, the shift key in the mouse wheel, as I orbit, now I will orbit specifically around that particular object. So I can isolate that. I know we've got object viewer. In this case, we can do some of this and then be directly in the model when we're done. I'll release the, uh, the object viewer or release the, uh, um, my shift key and the, uh, the wheel mouse on my, uh, or the wheel button on my mouse. And I've got my, my final display. Other things that I can adjust just from a, a visualization standpoint as we navigate around, I've got 2D wireframe. I've got other visual styles I, I can set. I'm gonna set this to conceptual just so that I can see the, the culvert and that moving underneath my roadway. Now, as I locate or navigate to any points within my model, whether they be in plan view, whether they be in a model view like what we're looking at here, um, it's always good to create like a bookmark or a view that I can restore that quickly. As we move around the project, I may want to be able to jump back to a particular point very quickly. To do that, I can come up to the view ribbon here. I'm going to select new view and I can give this a name. So we'll call this uh, box culvert and uh, type, you know, I'm going to leave it as the default for still. There are other things we can do with this that start getting into some animation around cinematic and recorded walk. Um, we can drill down and do some other stuff as well to capture the layer states with these views, you know, set some different values as it maybe moves from one view to the next. We could spend 30 minutes, we could spend all day just on what we can do here. So <clears throat> it's definitely worth exploring if you've not done a lot with views before. But for right now, we're just gonna capture this point in space. I'm gonna take and make a window here to kind of refine the area I'm looking at. It shows me what I saw on the screen. So I'm just gonna pick a window to define the area I'd like to see. We'll left pick, and then I'll hit enter to accept that. And it will capture my view. We'll say okay, and, and then that's saved. Now, as I navigate around my model, uh, to get myself back to a point where I'm looking at it in a state that I was when I started, what I can do or what I do very quickly is I type in the command plan. If I type in plan, it basically it knows I wanna go back to a plan view or a plan perspective of my UCS or the world coordinate system. Uh, I basically just hit plan. The default is the current UCS, which is what we were in previously. I'll hit enter and then I'll hit uh, enter again or plan enter and then enter on the UCS. The next thing we have to do is I would need to set this back to a 2D wireframe from whatever state that it was in previously. All right, for anybody that's attended one of my sessions before, I like to try and automate some of this stuff as much as is possible. Uh, so creating macros or other things like that to make this easier uh, because I, I don't wanna have to keep typing that in each time as we make adjustments to, uh, to things here. Let's uh, minimize this. Let's go back to... Uh, my civil, and I'm gonna right click. We're gonna do a uh, new file here. We'll say, this is gonna be my reset command. And I'll do this as reset.list. So it's a uh, command that I can run within the system. And then I'll enter the, the macro or the, the command line that I like to do. It's very simple. You know, a lot of folks, we start looking at programming and stuff like that. Well, that takes a long time to learn. This is actually very easy. It's just a single line. I'm gonna define a function that I can use at the command line. That function is gonna be RS, basically to reset my screen. I'm not gonna have any parameters. So I have open and closed parentheses. I'm then gonna go into command. We'll say the command line, I would type in plan like we did. By default, that gives us an enter. The second one is going to be the second enter, which is going to use the current UCS or square up the screen. The next command we'll do is my visual settings. So that command is VS current. 
I would be able to find that just by reviewing it down at the command line here to see what was actually being called when I clicked on this. And then the I'm going to go back to a 2D wireframe. So instead of spelling it all out, we'll just say two. A little house cleaning here at the end. We're going to say uh, prints. That'll eliminate a uh, nil return on the uh, list file when it's done. So I'm going to save that. With that saved, the beauty of it is it's kind of like some non-destructive tools I can use anywhere I want. I can drag this into Civil 3D. It says, hey, do you want to load that all the time or maybe only load it once? I'm going to load it once. Maybe there are files I store on the network. I can drag them into another environment, somebody else's machine. The great part is when I exit out of the application, it's gone. Uh, we'll say RS. As we start to type it in, we see it automatically becomes part of the autocomplete. And when I hit enter, in this case, it's not going to change anything because it's already in a correct state. Let's go restore our box culvert view. Now that we're looking at that, I'll use my command RS. We'll hit enter and it will restore it right back to where we'd like to go. All right. So most of my sessions, I generally create little commands. These would be things that I would not create all the time, but drag into my software as I would need those. All right. So now we've got a tool we can reset this quickly if need be. Um, when we started working with Zoom and Pan and things like that, those were all uh, commands we used to have to type in. Now they're part of the wheel. There's still advantages to typing some of these commands in. For example, if I type in Zoom, I can zoom to an object, scale, window, extents. Dynamic is kind of interesting. Dynamic will let me zoom without a regen being required. So basically, I'm going to pick points to define the window that I want. It's showing me the limits of my project that I can see that don't require a regen. I hover it over the area that I want, and when I right-click, it immediately goes there. I'm going to hit the up arrow for zoom. We're going to say dynamic. It shows me the window again. We'll make a bigger or smaller window, come down to another point in the project, right click, and it goes there. But every time it does, it does not require a regen. All right, so the command line versions of the command can actually be very helpful uh, to incorporate some of those or maybe even create some macros for some of those commands as well. We'll uh, come back to zoom extents. In addition to typing in commands like pan, or I'm sorry, zoom, we can also type in some commands like pan. In this particular case, I've got a viewport here. In this viewport, I've got a profile view. And what I would like to do is I would like to adjust the profile perfectly horizontally or maybe perfectly vertically so that it would line up with the next pages. I'm sure you would understand if I came into here and I was trying to do that with uh, the mouse, that be, would be more challenging to uh, accomplish. So we're going to say zoom previous here back up to where I was. I'm going to use the command line version of pan, but I'm going to say minus pan for pan. Now it's pan by picking two points. So I'm going to pick a point here. Ortho is currently locked on with F8, my function key. So if I pull to the left, I'm going to move 500 feet. And when I hit enter, it automatically pans. We can see that you know, these points still line up with my grid line. This is at 10 plus zero, zero. This one's at 15. If I want to do adjust it again, I'll click inside the window. We'll say minus pan. We'll uh, first point of displacement, pull to the right. Let's say we go 100 this time. We'll hit enter. I mean, you don't even see the grid flash because it's a perfect movement, horizontal, vertical, or whatever direction it is that you're going to go. So the command line versions of those, those commands can offer also offer tools that we can take advantage of. Uh, we looked at creating a layout before with those, uh, those layouts, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the view. If I look at my layout commands here at the top, we'll look at uh, the layout ribbon. And there is an option that I can say insert view. So the beauty of creating views is bookmarks. Once again, we created it in the model environment or 3D. We could also do it in 2D. I could say insert view. I've only got one here as my box culvert. I could drag that into my, my sheet and click, and it's automatically going to go and show me my model in the state that my view was created. So as you capture those particular areas, if you make exhibits or something like that, you can very quickly and easily restore to those points for, uh, for your presentation. Let's come back to model here for a minute. Everyone that's been working in civil, from the beginning, if we go to Prospector, there we have the ability in things like uh, pipe networks that we can go to an object, in this case, Storm Sewer, and we can navigate to that by saying Zoom 2. 
it immediately goes there. We can come down to assemblies, hit that, it'll go there as well. In some cases though, um, it may be skewed or it may not go exactly where we need it to. If we go to uh, corridors, and that's why I chose this model, if I zoom to on this, it basically it gives me a spot that's, that's out here in space. Something with how my corridor was defined, data was clipped or something about that. If I try and zoom to that, it's not necessarily going where I would like it to. The point that I would make is anything that we're looking for here, or anything that we can select, we can actually exploit the, uh, the view cube here to gain uh, display of that particular object. So if I right click on this corridor, there is an option that instead of saying zoom to, I'm gonna say select. Once that object is selected, I'm just gonna come and click the top of the view cube. And when I do that, it will go out and it will center that particular object for us on the screen. All right, so uh, that can be used in conjunction with what we've traditionally used in here. As I look at my model, I've got a section or a sample line here at station eight plus zero zero. It's cutting through a, a culvert. If I select on that sample line, making sure I'm gonna hit escape here, making sure my corridor is not also selected, I'm gonna right click and there is an option that I can say zoom to section view. So if that's available, it will immediately take me to the section view. I can view that. I can start to peruse my sections. I've got a ditch, I've got a ditch. Hey, wait a minute, the ditch went away. What's going, in my, in my, going on in my model? The ditch would be gone. I can now grab the section view boundary, come down and I can zoom back to sample line. That takes me back to this one and I can see that that section happens to be in an area where there's either an existing driveway or um, side road or something like that that's coming into my, my corridor. All right, so very helpful tool to help us navigate, jump back around from various things that have been created. Let's take a look at another example here. I'm gonna flip into a model. This is a very large model. It's got a, a coordinate system established with it. Um, this could be a large surface. In this case, it's parcels, but there's 165,000 of them. Um, we can all create things with Latin longs and stuff like that to locate points in space, but. Maybe I've got <clears throat> something I'd like to locate by address. I was at a public meeting and somebody that is adjacent to a long project or something has complained. I'm trying to figure out based on their address where they are in relationship to my project. <clears throat> what I can do is I can convert any address to a latitude and longitude using a command <clears throat> through, uh, it's the geo, geographic location command. So we'll go ahead and select that. I'm gonna say from the map, we'll enable online map data. <clears throat> it comes up, <clears throat> excuse me, I can type in my address. So whatever that address may be, uh, I use the um, address of the municipal building here in the town where I live, if I spell it correctly. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. I'm gonna drop a marker here and it, it's automatically found this point. We can see that the property is adjacent to Barrington Avenue and East Third Street. Well, it's also computed coordinates for me. So I'm gonna come down here into the window. I'm gonna copy that coordinate to uh, my scratch pad here. So we'll, we'll put that in. Actually, we'll put this up higher. I've got stuff in there from my former scratch pad. Let's grab this. This is my latitude. We'll put him up at the top. Paste. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of this command. I've converted it to a latitude and longitude. Now I'm going to find it with the zoom command. So I'm going to type in zoom. We'll hit Z for zoom. I'm going to use the center option. And the center point, because I've got latitudes and longitudes, I'm gonna use the transparent command here for apostrophe LL for lat long. The latitude was the last one that I picked. So I'm gonna hit control V for paste. The longitude, let's come back to my scratch pad. We'll grab this guy and we'll paste him as well. We'll hit enter. I don't have any more latitudes and longitudes I'd like to put in, I'll hit escape. And then it wants to know a zoom magnification. It's gonna center my zoom based on that point. How high up do I wanna be when I view it? 
I'm just going to say 500. And now I'm looking at it from that particular location. What I can do is we'll come into my map here. We'll turn on map roadway and we should see that uh, basically that parcel that was at the center of our screen is at the intersection of Barrington and East Third. Okay, so we're able to locate points within our model based off of address. <clears throat> a couple other things I can do is if I'm working with a very large model, what I can do is uh, orient myself, break the, the model up into multiple screens so I can work at like different extremities within the model at the same time. For example, I've got a wind turbine up in the north uh, east corner of my, my project. What I want to do is I can split the screen in half so that instead of having to pan or zoom to go back and forth all over uh, around the project, I can split the screen into two vertical. And now it's like having a second monitor. So I can back this up. We could pan, zoom up into another area within my project. And let's say I was going to add another uh, wind turbine here. We would click in this view to make this one current or this viewport. I'm going to go ahead. We'll go to home. I'll say copy. We're going to copy this object. I'm going to copy it from here. I'll click into the, this window. And when I take and drop it, I've dropped the new wind turbine on the opposite end of the county. Uh, if we wanted to, we could actually uh, measure that. We'll measure the distance from the insertion point of here to the insertion point on this guy in this window. And we see that it's about 61,000 feet between the two of them, all right? I'm not limited to just two windows. Uh, it's, it's difficult to see, but there's a little plus on this line here at the extremities. If I click and hold on that plus, I can break these into different additional windows, all right? So I could have my project broken out to where I have the overall project here, and then I've got critical areas of my project that I'm viewing in different viewports and it allows me to jump or navigate to those places very quickly. When I'm uh, done in the area that I'm, uh, I'm interested in, I could just go up to the plus. We could say uh, single and it would give me a, a single display then back at the area where we started. All right, so viewports can be a, an effective tool to uh, allow us to do that. Next thing I'd like to look at. I've got a project here that's similar to the one that we started with. Uh, corridor models, some utilities um, and, uh, and surfaces and that as part of this. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna restore a view. We'll go with start. All right, similar to what we had before, we've got different styles here. I've got a tool over on the side that if it doesn't display on the screen already, the way that we would bring it up is through a command that's called nav bar. So nav bar, it gives us the ability to turn that on or off. So it's, if it's off, we'll turn it on. We've got this navigation wheel that I'm gonna take and uh, click on, allows me to drag that out into my screen. And then once I'm in my model, I can hover over any of these objects and then access those commands. So I'm gonna click on walk. And as I move, I'm, I'm holding my mouse wheel down. As I move, I can kind of walk around the model. The further I get away from the dot, the faster it moves. I can hover, I can release my mouse wheel, come over to look, click and hold on that. Then I can kind of look around various points within my model where I'm at. I'll go back to walk. I can continue to walk down the street. Um, if I want to see the utilities, there's an option here for up or down. I'll go down below the roadway. I can continue to walk underneath the roadway looking at the utilities. I can come back, I can go above ground, and I can continue to, uh, to walk and move as well. All right, while we're doing this, zoom, orbit, and pan, all the same as what you would have expected before. There's even a rewind that I can kind of scrub backwards in this command to see where I was, go back to that particular point, and then you know turn and start looking at the utilities going back the other direction. Okay, so fantastic tool for, uh, for being able to navigate around the, uh, the project. I'm gonna use my command here for reset. We'll drag that guy back in, we'll hit RS for reset. I'm looking at it back at the top view. Other things I can do is I can drive the corridor. I'm gonna select the button here for the corridor model. In the contextual ribbon, there is an option here for drive. I'm going to uh, select that and it's gonna ask me what, uh, what corridor feature do I wanna drive? We'll just grab the crown of the roadway at this point. 
When it comes in, we've got tools within the, the, uh, the interface here that I can adjust my eye height. I can adjust my target. Um, I can adjust my display here. We'll go to, uh, we'll set this to shaded. Uh, I can adjust a virtual speed. I can go to a particular station. Um, my speed right now is 40 miles an hour. I can hit play and I can start moving down the road. All right. Based on my settings in Civil, I can have some things set up as transparent so I can kind of easily drive around the model, see the utilities and that underneath. At any point, I could click on reverse. I can start going back the other way through the model, driving back down the roadway. Um, we can. We'll hit reverse again, we'll pause. I can change path. So I've got an option here that I can change path and I can select a, another uh, feature line from my corridor model and it will allow me to now drive on that or I could hit enter and I could select items from a list that I could drive those as well. All right, now I don't want you to think that this is tied solely to a corridor model. I'm gonna close out of this. I've got a polyline that was in here initially that was then turned into a, uh, a feature line. It was draped onto the surface. This is like a custom path that was, was created. Is this green line here, goes up, uh, draped over the surface, so it goes over the roadway and then down in the ditch the other side. You know, if, if I select that, I get a drive option as well. I'm going to go ahead and select that. We'll bump my, my height up a little bit. I'm going to set my uh, shaded and maybe drop my speed down just a touch and we'll hit play. And you'll see as I go down the, uh, the roadway, you'll actually, it'll you know, move up and over and I can navigate down and start moving down the ditch, uh, doing more review. I can do this as I work on it as an editing tool, a design tool. I can also use this as a way to help present to somebody who may have some questions about how something works or functions doesn't necessarily uh, you know, they're not able to visualize it in a more of a traditional 2D plan sheet type display. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this guy. As we do these lines, it's pretty much any linear feature. Uh, it does alignments, it does feature lines, it does survey figures, it does a number of, uh, of different things. We can, because we can convert that into a, uh, any linear object into one of those things, effectively any linear feature we can drive. Uh, last thing I want to take a look at here is fly. Let's go back to our start view. We did a walk. Let's do a quick fly. That command is 3D fly. When I hit enter, we get a uh, kind of a bird's eye view here. If anyone has ever played uh, Half-Life before, the keyboard commands are the same. So I can use the arrow keys to go forward, backward, left, and right. I can also use uh, uh, a and D to go left and right, WS to go forward and back. If I left click with the mouse and hold, I can look around as well as my elevation on the mouse will control whether I'm flying up or flying down. So as I'm flying, I'm going over the, uh, the roadway here. As I'm pulling up, I'm going higher. Uh, not that exciting because it's moving pretty slow. As we talked about initially, I can adjust some of the throws on these things. So I'm gonna go to walk and fly settings. I'm gonna take and tweak this maybe to 10 steps per second. And now when I hit the uh, up arrow, I'm flying across this quite a bit faster. All right, so I can move around. I've got the little uh, X for my target on the screen. You know, I can, I can use that to actually try and fly through uh, utilities or, or look at a uh, particular location in the model. I'm gonna turn myself around and I can fly up and over and continue to move around this. Once again, any of this, they're navigation tools. They let us move around the model. We find something that's of interest to us. We can capture a view, make a bookmark. From that bookmark, we can re restore uh, that on the screen, come back and do additional design, edit, show it to somebody, make it part of an exhibit. Um, there's just a whole list of other things that can be done with that. All right, so with that, I am getting dangerously close to the top of the hour. So I'm going to flip back to my PowerPoint here. So what we looked at, we looked at some traditional commands. We looked at maybe some aspects of those commands maybe you haven't worked with before. We looked at a way that we can exploit the view cube from within the prospector tab, maybe to, to zoom something on the screen that may be challenging to locate. Otherwise, we can uh, locate some areas via address. It doesn't have to necessarily all be coordinate based. We can use uh, viewports to break up a large model into 
uh, smaller parts so we can kind of be in multiple places in that project at the same time to measure distances or just um, be able to analyze or, or see what we need to see without having to be scrolling, you know, in some cases, perhaps miles down the road to get to where we need to be. Uh, drive tool, we can drive it uh, along the ditch, the corridor model, survey figures, 3D polylines, things like that. And then we also looked at walk and fly. It gives us a mechanism that we can kind of experience our model in the state that it is, and then um, uh, be able to make decisions or uh, decide where we wanna go from there. All right, so uh, with that, I'm uh, going to uh, uh, make the assumption that our questions have been addressed to this point. As we mentioned before, any questions that have not been addressed, we will absolutely get back to you with an answer. So on behalf of uh, Alan, Angel, Jeff, and myself, we'd like to thank you for attending our session. We know your time is valuable and we appreciate you investing some of that time with us. And we certainly look forward to seeing you again in another couple of weeks. See ya.